Can the Canadians maintain their winning record and who or what was to blame for creating last year's locker room of discontent? That and more in this week's Hockey Inside Out. Welcome to this week's show. I'm Adam Sesso. You know who I am. That's uh, <laughs> Stu Cowan over there, CBC Daybreak, Jessica Rosnack, and Mr. Chris Nyland. Let's get down to business. If you predicted that the Canadians were going to have a 6-2-2 two two record 10 games into the season, please contact me on Facebook because I'd like to know what type of legal cannabis you've been smoking. The Habs' early success has been a team effort with all four lines doing their part and everyone buying into Claude Julien's system. After 10 games, who would you choose as the Canadians' MVP? I think it's pretty obvious, and I have a feeling we'll all agree on this one, Max Domi, that uh, he's been able to score goals, succeed at playing center, and uh, really show that the Canadians did not make a mistake trading Alex Galchenyuk for him because there was a lot of question marks. Last year, he was not producing. Uh, he had nine goals, I believe, and four of them were empty netters. So, um, to me, Max Domi is the MVP. I think one of the underrated MVPs is Jeff Petrie. You know, Shea Weber gone is a huge hole as a number one def defenseman, and, and Jeff Petrie has done a much better job this year than he did last year, and he was sort of thrust into it. I agree with you, Domi is the MVP, but I think the, sort of the underrated MVP through the first 10 games is Petrie. He's right up there among the team leaders in scoring. He's playing a lot of minutes, playing much better defensively after being, I think it was minus 30 last year. So uh, as he's been a real nice MVP type defenseman so far this season. Yeah, I, I like going with Domi here too because even though he's leading the team in points and all that, and, and that's not the reason I'm picking him. Uh, you know, when he was traded here uh, for Alice Galchenyuk, Mark Bergman said that there's more to Max Domi than the goals and assists and his passing ability. And I think he's, he's, he's brought that and shown us what Mark Bergman was talking about. And to me, um, to have a guy like that in your team, he's kind of... Maybe not quite like Alex Radulov as far as a guy who, who drags everybody else into the fight, but he's pretty close to it. And, um, you know, to me, he's, he's just a great addition for this team moving forward. What I like about Domi is he works as hard as Brendan Gallagher, mm -hmm. and he's got better skills. I mean, at least two or three times a game, he'll make a pass where I'll go, wow, how did he see that mm -hmm. guy? He's got such great vision. He works harder, and he's also got a mean streak, which he showed against Dallas when he took a shot there, and he did a good two-handed swing at the defenseman who gave it to him. He's not afraid, like Gallagher, he's not afraid of going to the dirty areas. He's not afraid of sticking his nose in there, and he's a little guy who plays bigger than his size, just like Gallagher, just like Byron. Do you think uh, Joel Armia should continue to get time on the power play? He's, he's played 191 career NHL games. He has zero power play goals. I mean, a lot of that has to do with uh, he wasn't really used on the power play in Winnipeg, but he's not a real offensive threat. I know, I understand why Julian has him there. He's a big body, and I want that big body presence. But we're talking about Domi playing bigger than his size. Armia plays smaller than his size. Mm -hmm. If you want size in front of the net, you might even throw like a Delorier out there just to create havoc in front of the net and at least be a, a more of a presence there. So I don't, I mean, after the game, uh, uh, Julian said, well, you know, we, we know he can score and we're going to give him time and it's going to come and we'll see. But how long are you going to wait before you put somebody else? As I said, if you're looking for a big body presence, you can even put a smaller guy out there who's a little bit more physical than him for a presence in front of the net. I think for Halloween, he should dress up as a ghost because yeah. that's basically Ooh. what he's been so far on the Habs lineup. That he's not someone that you've noticed. I've found in the preseason, you, you know, you could get excited with him. He showed glimpses and you were saying, okay, this can really work out for the Montreal Canadiens. But so far this season, he he really hasn't done anything and a lot of times you forget that he's even in the lineup because you don't see him doing anything. Yeah, you know, it's, it, it's tough when I, I look at this kid because he does have the size, has the skating ability, can handle the puck. He doesn't have that finish and I think that's, um, you know, we saw that with a player we had here for years in La Zella. You know, he would do some amazing things and then, you know, he'd go in on the goalie and hit the organist in the head. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yahoo! Um, but, I, I, again, I me, I, yeah, he is struggling, but uh, hopefully uh, with time he'll come around. Here's the deal. Uh, one thing I don't see him being is really assertive, really when he gets around the net digging in or in the corners, you know. I see glimpse of it, but, um, you know, he, he certainly has to uh, have more get up and go, more drive, uh, or he's never going to score. No, the first period against Dallas, there was one play where there was a rebound, came out in front of the net, and it sat there for about a second, and Armia sort of 
tried to get there. Like if Brendan Gallagher's on the ice, that puck's in the back of the net. There's no doubt about it. So he's got to get more. You wonder if he has it in him, but mm -hmm. it's just it, that aggressiveness just seems to be missing. I mean, he is, you know, Chris said he can skate. He's got size. He's got all that stuff. I mean, Jacob Delarose had all that too, but you just need to have, he needs more of that grid, I think, to go to the dirty area. Mm. Uh, Carey Price shut out the Bruins on Saturday night in Boston. Do you think that was a that was a statement game made by Price and the team? No, I don't know so much a statement game. Um, anytime you go into Boston, it's going to be a difficult game, uh, whether it was the 60s, 70s, 80s, or what it is today. Uh, the game has changed somewhat. But to go into Boston, the team they have, uh, again, they get the big line. And to me, shutting down the big line mm -hmm. was a big thing. And uh, they did one hell of a job uh, against that team. Price obviously focused uh, back on his game. Uh, they were able to uh, do good on the penalty kill in Boston. And uh, something they've certainly struggled at. They're 19th on the power play, 19th on the penalty kill. Uh, things aren't good in special teams. But to go in there and win uh, like that, um, yeah, is it a statement? It's just so early in the season. You know, I think if it was you know, the last month of the season and you know, last week and you're, you're going to face Boston in the playoffs, um, it could be looked at as a statement game. So you think they'll make the playoffs? This is the <laughs> first year. Well, no, talking like this. No, this I didn't say that. While. I didn't say that okay. at all. No, I, I think it was a good bounce back game for them in Boston because they played, they didn't play well the night before in Buffalo. And now it'll be interesting to see how they can bounce back from the game against Dallas and if they can. But to me, Kane's games in Boston have never been the same since Knuckles was <laughs> playing. His buddy Sergio Mameso tweeted the other day about blaming you for making him get in a fight in the hallway in Boston. Yeah, he's blaming me. I said, no, 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 Sergio. Blame them. <laughs> You're causing fights indirectly. <laughs> but, it was, I mean, it was, it was a good bounce back game. And Boston's always a tough place to win. And, you know, Carey Price with the shutout, it was his first shutout in almost a calendar year. Um, so whether he can continue that back, you know, against Dallas, things didn't go as well. It wasn't Carey Price's fault, but uh, um, we'll see. I mean, it was, uh, we'll see. As I said, they haven't lost two games in a row yet, and that'll be a key going forward. We'll see if they can bounce back from what happened against Dallas. And I think it's just players elevating their game for big games that they know going into Boston. It's an exciting one for people who don't necessarily watch the Habs. They might tune into this one because of the Boston and Montreal rivalry. And I think it was just the first taste of it, and they're trying to uh, show the new and improved Montreal Canadiens team that wants to work uh, every single night and having the addition of trying to bounce back from Buffalo was just a good combination and it worked out to their favor. Do you feel like this team has more of an identity this year than they did last year or the year before even? Somewhat so but um, they're certainly going to have a, a tough time uh, maintaining that identity. You know it's a long season, uh, small fast team that's great but um, already, uh, you know, when you look at this, this young season, they've been okay injury-wise, but it's going to catch up with them. And uh, the longer this season goes, the tougher the games are going to get. January, February. So just think about Tuesday night in February in Columbus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they've got to start getting more than just penalties out of their fourth line. <clears throat> I mean, with that system they play, it's a lot easier to play if you roll four lines with that fast-paced system. And the fourth line just hasn't they've been just taking penalties that have been resulting in goals for the other team. They need to, you know, I asked Claude Julien the other day after practice if the last season he talked about needing an identity on the fourth line. And I said, what's your identity for this year? And he said, there's sort of two identities. He said, one's sort of a faster fourth line for depending on which team you're playing against, and one is more of a gritty fourth line. But I think he's got to sort of find the regular fourth line and let them develop some chemistry together because playing that system and not being able to play your fourth line in the third period just tires out your other three right, lines yeah. and then they fall apart. Okay. So Chris, you sort of answered, uh, you sort of half answered my next question. I'll ask the panel, but you could weigh in more if you want to. Uh, do you think the Canadians are good enough to maintain the pace and uh, record that they've established in their first 10 games for the rest of the season? Well, I don't think they're going to average 6-2-2 two, two every 10 <laughs> games, but it's a great start to the season. Yeah. I mean, last season they started so poorly and it just, they couldn't, it was a downward slide and they couldn't find a way to come back up. So it's a great start to give them some confidence going forward. I mean, they're not going to, I mean, every team in the NHL is going to go through ups and downs during the season and the Canes will go through a spell where they go 2-6-2 two, and two or something like that. Uh, it's all about bouncing back and whether they can bounce back and stop 
the downslide they had last year when things do start to go bad a little bit? Well, I think their ability to bounce back has really been shown in the last few games uh, that they've been able to park that problem and move on from it compared to last year where, say, they were they had a lead and then they blew it and it's, oh, here we go again. You know they're going to lose that game. But this year it's a different philosophy that they're more confident in themselves. Now, I think because they've surprised so many teams, that has sort of helped them to win games and maybe now that other teams are starting to figure out you know, their style of play this year and that they're a team that you can't underestimate that – it will start to get a little bit more difficult as other teams have a little bit more video on them and know what the Canadians are going to be bringing. Well, Mark Berger, when I met with the media this week, talked about how last season the Canadians would score and then they'd give up a goal right away. And he said it became mm -hmm. like a habit. He said it's going to happen once in a while, but last year's season it happened regularly. And he had a good quote when he said, you know, to, to, to fall down is an accident, but to choose not to get up is a decision. Mm -hmm. And this team has chosen to get up when things have gone bad so far anyway. Yeah, it's... Again, it's going to come down to injuries. This team, uh, if they don't stay healthy, they're going to have a difficult time. You look at um, having uh, Coach Kiemi in there, a young kid who they're trying to protect, mm -hmm. and he's playing okay. But, you know, what happens with him down the road? Then you're looking to replace him uh, with another sentiment. And so I don't think things are going to get better as far as up the middle uh, as this season wears on. And... Um, you know, the, I, I worry about the injury thing with this team down the road. And, um, you know, I, I really, I like the way they play. There's an excitement around this team. There's that stick to it uh, no quit uh, attitude. Um, they got to fix uh, the power play, penalty kill, and certainly the undisciplined stuff. And I know. All about that. <laughs> well, you're talking All about, about that, I know. You're talking about injuries. Uh, the lower body injury to Paul Byron in the game against Dallas. He didn't come up for the third period. And that, if that is serious, that's a big blow to this team. Yeah. He's a key player. So in that same press conference with Mark Bergevin, he, uh, he said that last year he noticed that there was a problem in the team's locker room as early as last November. Uh, last week, Andrew Shaw said that the, the atmosphere in last year's team in the locker room was just toxic. What do you think it was that caused all these problems last season? You know, I, I, I don't want to, even, to me, I don't want to go there. It's past, blah, 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 it's gone, who cares? But, but that's one of it's the questions. <laughs> I, I don't care uh, who did what. It was toxic, whatever it was. Um, what I find interesting about Bergeron is he, he, he recognized it early in the season. Now, I'm sure he tried to do something about it if he recognized it, but maybe couldn't. You know, a lot of, uh, we spoke yesterday about it on my show and saying, you know, why didn't he do something in November if he recognized it? But uh, I think he tried. And just to try and get rid of a problem, if you do it, you know, obviously you're dealing from a position of weakness. And uh, if you make the wrong move at the wrong time, could cost you. Now, let's just say Pacioretty had something to do with it. <laughs> You know, he waited, and look uh, what he ended up with. You know, uh, Suzuki, Tata, and uh, the, what, pick. the pick. So, you know, if he did it in November, you don't know what he would have got. So, um, and I'm sure it wasn't as good as that. Well, well uh, losing creates a toxic environment also. Yeah. And I think you mentioned Pacioretty. I mean, my, one of my lasting memories from last season was early in the season when they were in California and Pacioretty was struggling. And he said, it's hard to be a leader when you're the worst player on the team. That's when you have to be a leader. Yeah. That's yeah. when you got to pick it up. If you're not producing on the ice, you have to become a For better sure. leader. Yeah. And it's, in hindsight, I'm sure it's something he wishes he didn't say, but Max always spoke from his heart, and, and which as a journalist was great. You like the guys who aren't just talking cliche. Shays, but at the time, I remember thinking that's something Shea Weber would never say. Mm. I don't even think he'd think it, but well, if he was thinking smart. it, he wouldn't say it. Because he's but, smart. I don't but think it was, it was a case of, like guy who would think it was a case you of, I think. You them emotional, vulnerable guys, Stu, don't you? Because <laughs> when he said <laughs> so it, I remember. Pick him apart. I remember when he said it, and thinking in the back of my mind, like, you shouldn't be saying that out loud. And I'm thinking, yeah. what are his teammates thinking when they hear him saying yeah. that also? It just comes down to losing. No one in a losing atmosphere ever said, well, we were losing, but we had fun while doing it. You know, that <laughs> yes. you're losing. Life is not easy, especially in a market like Montreal, and that's what causes a toxic environment. If the Canadians didn't get off to the start they have this year, I don't know if the environment would be any different than last year. I think Shea Weber, even though he hasn't played yet, I think him just having the C, I think 
is part of it. I mean, he's around. You see him. Mm -hmm. We don't see him in the media. I, mean, I saw him leaving uh, with Andrew Shaw after the game uh, against Dallas. So he's around the team. And I think, I wonder if maybe Weber felt he didn't really want to step on Pacioretty's toes too much when he first came here as the captain. Probably. I mean, now it's his team. Now he's the captain of the team. So I wonder how much that has had an impact. And I've said it before, in hindsight, I'm... Bergevin, I'm sure, wishes he probably should have taken the captaincy off of Pacioretty when he first got Weber, and I think it might have been a bit of a different environment. Yeah, one would think that that would cause more problems at the time, but I guess in hindsight it's easier well, to get say over it. Joe Thornton had the captaincy taken off him, and you get over yeah, it. Yeah, but Max yeah. would have never accepted mm -hmm. it. Yeah. They, it would have put, you'd think it was down then. If yeah. they ever took the C away, forget about it. He would have packed it in. Yeah, all right. Well, on that note, it is the end of this week's show. We want to thank you all for tuning in. Are the Canadians as good as their current record, or are they just on a hot streak? Let us know in the comments section below. I'm Adam Susser, and I'll see you back here next Thursday. <laughs>